We are live. Okay. Oh my goodness, I'm so nervous. <laughs> We're doing it. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Melanie. If you're if you're new to the group, um, yeah, we're just sharing sharing happy thoughts and we're sharing ways to make the world a better place. And it all starts with us because we are the lens that we see our world through. So today I am so graciously joined by Brian King, um, who seems to be a, a wizard and a master in this area. I'm so happy that he's here. Uh, Brian, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? A little bit. I'm used to telling a lot of it, but I'll try and condense it as best I can. Uh, my life has been very bumpy. Yes. I, I often say that I grew up on an unpaved road full of potholes and no shoulder and driving off into the ditch. Mm -hmm. uh, my life has been predominantly about struggle. I grew up with undiagnosed ADHD, dyslexia, Asperger's. Didn't find out about any of this until I was in my late 30s when my oldest boy started school and my graduation present from high school was stage three testicular cancer and i spent the summer in chemotherapy i eventually got married i have three boys all three of whom have asperger's and adhd and in the past seven years i've diagnosed with several chronic conditions i'll see if i can remember them in order uh kidney disease I got about 40, upper 40% of kidney function. And I have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is an inherited connective tissue disorder, which means my joints are very bendy and loose. I am a high fall risk. My joints often partially dislocate or get stuck and they hurt all the time. And in 2017, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I also have a blood disorder called polycythemia which means my blood gets thicker over time and to the point where I could have a stroke. And I just had a bloodletting a couple of weeks ago because my blood got so thick it was coming out like a milkshake and I felt like garbage. So they had to remove, yeah. a, they had to remove a pint of it and it kind of even things out. And that kind of brings us to today where I've kind of found my way to a place where I'm perfectly at home in my own skin. There are days where it gets to me and I get a little pissy. And that's when I really dig down and get into my practice of being mindful and present and full of gratitude and ma maintaining that abundance perspective as opposed to thinking in terms of, this is unfair, I can't do this, you know, why me? And, I, I just, I, I can't spend any, any time in that space anymore. It's suffocating. It's, it, it's self-blaming. There's just really not a whole lot of excitement there. And I'm also mindful of the fact that my boys are watching me live my life. Mm -hmm. And they have their own challenges. Uh, I don't mind them seeing me struggle sometimes or being vulnerable. They've even seen me ugly cry. But at the end of it, they see me moving forward. They see me making mm -hmm. use of those experiences as opposed to those looking like defeat. They look like part of it. Sometimes I have more difficult days than others, but for the most part, I deal with it. I get back up and I move forward. And that is something I hope they begin to take on as they navigate their own lives. Yeah, that is super inspiring. So for those of you watching, Brian and I just connected on Facebook and um, he posts the most uplifting and happy things and you would never know all of the the medical struggles that you're dealing with or you know every everything. To me, I find that very inspiring because you are walking the walk and talking the talk, you know? Like you have every reason to say, why me, life is so hard and you yet, turn around and um, it's very inspiring. So thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't want to give the impression that I just woke up one morning and said, I'm going to grab life by the horns. This has been a long journey. I had cancer 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I learned I was in remission, I declared that I was going to live a life of conscious purpose. Mm -hmm. And it has not been a smooth road by any means. You have mm -hmm. to confront your demons and do the work to 
get through them and let them go. And there are times where you have big setbacks and you stay stuck in it for a while. Mm -hmm. And then you find your way out and you need to bring people in who can mentor you and guide you as opposed to thinking that this is something you do in some egocentric bubble all by yourself without any help. And there are so many people suffering needlessly because mm. they've bought into this rugged individualism that says, I've got to pull myself up on my bootstraps and do it all by myself. Good luck with your misery because that's what you're going to bring upon yourself. It is so much more powerful to do this in the context of community. Mm. You know, we, we both have Facebook groups and having like-minded people that can support you and hold you accountable makes it far more easy to be vulnerable and take risks because you know there's someone there to catch you when you fall. Mm -hmm. And it is so much more difficult to accomplish that when you feel like an island. Nobody gets you, nobody's supporting you, and you're simply not going to take or see the same opportunities to grow because you're going to see too much risk. So let go of that idea that it needs to happen in a vacuum and allow some people to participate in your journey so that you have a greater opportunity of success. Definitely, I love that. And I especially love your reminder at the beginning that this has been a 30 year journey and a lifelong journey. I think yeah. um, some of the members in my group and I know for me personally, it can be frustrating to look at other people and say like, oh, it seems so far away or like, of course it's easy for them to feel this way. They were born with these genes or whatever and it's like, you know, me personally, the practice has been daily for years and years and years. And for you too, it sounds like it doesn't happen overnight and it definitely doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's so important to surround yourself with like-minded people and people that lift you up and support you and um, can share what they're learning too. In addition, you know, then you, you become stronger together. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it's like the, the metaphor of, I don't know, like 10 strands of rope or something. You know, you have one string, but then when you bind them all mm. together and they combine, the rope is stronger and you, you can't pull it apart and it's harder to cut. Yeah. Each, each strand is a person. You know, you're interdependent, you're collaborative, you work together to make the bond even stronger. Mm -hmm. And look at what's happening now with the protests. You have a community that's banding together. I saw the pictures of the march in France yesterday mm -hmm. and it looked like everybody you know, hey, if you live in France, come on out into the streets. Because mm -hmm. it was so packed, so many numbers. And that kind of congregation, that makes a much greater statement than one person out there. Absolutely. Shouting and saying, the end is near, it's doomsday. You know, mm -hmm. it, It's just so much more impactful to do things. Mm -hmm. A movement has to happen at a community level. And that not only is in respect to social change, but individual change. Because the people that we look to who are getting the results we want, how much harder would it be to find those results if nobody was modeling it for us? So true. And so when you look at somebody and you envy them and you say, it looks so far away, it looks so far away, one of the things that you're missing is that they're doing it now. Mm. They're not doing it five years from now, you're doing it now. And you're in the same now they're in. Mm. The main difference is what is your lens on the now? What's your perspective? And you can talk to them and say, so how you doing this? How you doing now? And you talked about it being a daily practice. Absolutely. Because now is where your practice is. Now is where your life is. Anything you think about the future, you're thinking about it now. Mm -hmm. Not thinking about it then. Stuff you remember from your past. You're thinking about it now. Mm -hmm. Now is where the work is. Now is where your life is. It's not about distance. It's not about time. It's about where's your attention. Mm. Yeah. And that is the one thing to learn from anybody that's getting the results that you want. Find out how they're using their attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And I also think it's a positive spin on envy or jealousy, which tend to be uncomfortable emotions, you can say instead, how can I learn from this person? They have what I want, which means it's possible. So let me just ask them what they're doing. Absolutely. And envy and jealousy, it positions you as inferior to the person that you're looking to. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And whenever you're proceeding from a sense of not good enough, there's all kinds of ugly stuff that comes up. Mm -hmm. Shame, embarrassment, when the reality is you're both equal, you both have the same inherent worth. The thing that difference, differs in besides attention is what do you believe about yourself? Yes. And if you believe there are these such things as you and I, there is the other, there is better, there is worse. That stuff works great in a world that's very dichotomous. You want to go left or right. You want to go up or down. It has its purpose. But we kind of miss the boat when we start using it to assess the worth of things, mm -hmm. especially ourselves. Yeah. So I want to encourage people to just assume that you're good enough. Your default setting is good enough, period. I love that. And if you proceed from that, no matter what somebody says to you, they can say, oh, you look ugly. Okay. Mm. Thank you for sharing your opinion, but you know what? I'm still good enough. Mm -hmm. And here's the rub. So are you. People that are angry, that are reactive, that are disproportionately sad, have some kind of inner dialogue that says, I'm not good enough for the life I'm in. Mm. I'm doing it wrong. I'm making mistakes. People don't like me. People don't want to be around me. None of that is likely true. Mm -hmm. And if it is true, there are ways you can examine it to see what the issue is. Because a lot of the times that we feel locked out, it's because we self-isolate. Mm. We're so afraid of being criticized that we keep our distance. And then we think nobody wants to include us when we're giving off those loud messages to keep away. For sure. It becomes a feedback loop. I talk about that in some of my videos where if you believe you're not good enough, then you see the world through that lens and it all becomes proof that you're not. So, you know, if you feel isolated and then you shut yourself out, then it just feeds that same feedback loop because then as you're isolating yourself, people won't invite you to things which perpetuate, perpetuates the belief that you already have. Yeah, the self-fulfilling prophecy. Another mm -hmm. piece of that is confirmation bias. Yes. Where once you've decided something is right, you look for evidence to support that position. Mm -hmm. And you see that in a lot of the discussions now, whether it's political, religious, and now the race issue, yes. where someone believes they're an authority, they believe they're right, and the only thing they want to hear is confirmation. And if they don't hear it, the other person's wrong, they're uninformed, they're not woke, mm -hmm. they're ignorant, they're sheep because they don't agree with me. Mm -hmm. It's not about being right. It's about doing right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. So I have some more questions. If you're watching this at home and you want me to ask Brian anything, write it in the comments because we can see you. Um, you you say that you your focus is rewiring beliefs to help us um, believe that we're good enough. So I'm curious if you have any specific tips or like what's the first step if someone's watching at home? What is like the lowest hanging fruit that someone can start doing to make that mindset shift? One of the lowest hanging fruits, the certain ideas that I like to introduce just, introduce just to get the mind moving a little bit. Mm -hmm. One is the fact that you are not your thoughts mm. and you are not the stories. So any story you tell yourself about who you are and who you aren't, they're just stories they're not truth mm -hmm. because over time your stories change the stories you told yourself when you were five are hopefully not the stories you're telling yourself at 25 or 30. Mm -hmm. they evolve they are refined and they help you not only understand the world and people differently but your role in it and the story can change based on the situation i did a, a video the other day based on a conversation I had with my clients. And one of my clients said, bipolar is a part of who I am. Mm. And I asked her, are there times where you don't feel manic? I said, well, of course. Are there times you don't feel depressed? Yes. Who are you then? You know, or if you say, I'm a generally a happy person. Well, do you allow yourself to grieve? And if you grieve, are you doing something wrong because you're supposed to be happy? 
Or do you allow yourself to simply have a human experience that's very fluid, where you're very present, mm -hmm. and the person that you are is the person that is required of you in that moment? And it changes. So understand yourself as somebody that is in process, mm. not somebody that has to arrive. When you arrive, you get attached to things like, I'm an attorney, I'm a champion, I'm this, because you're measuring yourself uh, against some kind of destination or status mm -hmm. when the reality is that will change at some point. If it's status, what happens when you retire? Who are you then? You hear stories of people dying like within a couple of years after a career because they've lost their meaning. Yeah. What if your meaning was all about how you showed up as opposed to where you did it? I can show up one way at my job, I can show up another way with my spiritual community, I can show up for my kids for a perfect stranger. Mm -hmm. And all of those instances of showing up happen in the present. It's just about who you are, not what you call yourself. Mm -hmm. So just being aware of the fact that you're not your stories, that you're not your thoughts, creates a distance between your awareness and those mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. to where you now see them as this river of stuff just passing between your eyes, but it's not necessarily passing through you. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be a part of you. Does that For answer sure. your question? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. I in, in my videos, I talk about meditation a lot to help you realize that you are not your thoughts and also journaling has mm -hmm. been really uh, pivotal for me because I, when I'm writing things, you know, at the end of the day, if I reflect and say, how did I feel this morning? Well, I was really sad this morning, but I'm happy now. So what was that? What was happening this morning and what changed? So meditating and journaling were really huge for me. I'm wondering if there are other tools that you've been using to help you remember that you're not your thoughts and, and slash or to keep you present and stop thinking so much about your identity, your past and, and your future. Gratitude is a big one. Mm. And when I say gratitude, I say gratitude for all of it. Because when I'm in pain, when I'm in, in pain and I can't get out of bed, yeah, my brain is tempted to go negative and think about how this is terrible and it's miserable and, and I hate it. And my brain does go there for a couple seconds and I catch it. And then I ask myself, what do I love about this moment? What does mm. this make what does this make possible? And I've got a window in my bedroom with all the sunlight coming in and I'm just quiet and I can hear the birds outside. I can hear my boys laughing and I'm just taking it and thinking how wonderful is it that my boys can find laughter in this difficult time? Yeah. How, how wonderful is it that I can just lay here and listen to the animals outside and think about how fortunate I am to be alive during this time and focus on all the things that are happening in this moment that if I were not here, I would not have the opportunity to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And when I focus on those, the pain tends to diminish somewhat. I definitely feel less anxious and more mm -hmm. relaxed. And it's simply a matter of how I use my attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. So one thing that I would recommend is find something that you do ordinarily in the course of the day mm -hmm. you brush your teeth in the morning hopefully yes <laughs> or you shower or you eat breakfast is there any part of that process that you can simply be present with and by being present i mean you are fully immersed in the experience mm -hmm. if you are rubbing a washcloth over your skin feel the temperature the the water run between your fingers slowly feel it move up and down your arm to where that's the only thing that's happening for you. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of presentness, the mindfulness that will keep you anchored in this moment and away from thoughts of, oh, I wish it were like this past thing that I imagine. Yeah. Or I hope that I'm better or over this sometime in the future. Because the more you bounce between those two polarities, Mm -hmm. The more you're comparing your present to those things mm -hmm. and the less your present measures up. Wow. So forget Can that. Can you repeat that last line? That was deep. Whoa. 
I said, the more you compare your present to the past and the future, the less your present's going to measure up. Yes. Because we so often think in terms of ideals. Mm -hmm. And ideals are based on this isn't good enough, this will be better. But the reality is, even if we did achieve that better, well, then we're going to set the bar differently. Mm -hmm. Now, being in the present doesn't argue against growth. Mm -hmm. Because we are here for growth. We're here for maturity. You look at any seed that's planted, it wants to grow. Yeah. It knows what its potential is. But it doesn't grow the opposite of its best interest, right? Yeah. A flower doesn't say, oh, I think I was here to be a squirrel. Mm -hmm. I'm not tolerating this flower stuff. And then it fights itself and it suffers because it's not mm -hmm. owning who it is. So growth is part of it. What's important for us to learn is who are we in this moment? as opposed to the resistance and the narrative mm -hmm. that we tell ourselves that we're not supposed to be ourselves, we're supposed to be something else. Yeah. So getting really into who am I in this moment? Who am I not? What do I need to let go of? What do I need to tune into so I can show up so fully myself that just being here creates impact? I love that. <laughs> that's, that's presence. And that's really what is within us to achieve for ourselves. Definitely, definitely. I think it is the biggest disservice to the world. I think we, so much of society tells those flowers that they need to be squirrels or they tell the sunflowers that they should be daisies or roses. And that is the biggest injustice because I think we were all born to shine as who we are. And we need to embrace that. The squirrel is so beautiful and just like the flower is beautiful and they are different and that's okay. And they both bring amazing things into this world and and they shouldn't try to be each other. They need to just embrace their own um, uniqueness and their own shine. Absolutely. And one question I recommend people ask is whenever you seem to be being invited to not be good enough, mm. like basically any marketing message, <laughs> oh, do you wish your hair could shine more? Or do you wish you had you know six pack abs or whatever? One question to ask is, who benefits if I believe that? Great question. Because the people that are saying, well, you want to be in the in crowd, you need to have the new Pepsi. Okay, who benefits if I believe that? Well, the people that are trying to convince me that the only way to fill this gap in myself is to consume their product, well, they went, what do I win? Mm -hmm. hmm, I get to spend more money on something that I'm convinced is going to somehow make me feel more secure when the reality is, I don't need anything to be secure in the first place because I'm already good enough and I was distracted from that truth. Mm -hmm. So that if you do consume something, it helps you grow. Mm -hmm. It, you know, there's nothing wrong with creature comforts, a little comfort mm -hmm. food every now and then. You don't want to make it a lifestyle, then it becomes self destructive. Mm -hmm. But that you do things consciously and aware of it as opposed to by virtue of social conditioning or social pressure. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, I'm hearing the, the objections, people saying, well, if I love myself fully now, I'm gonna stop growing. You know, if I accept myself as I am, then I won't go to the gym anymore or I won't eat healthy food because I love myself unconditionally, you know, I'm just gonna let myself go. Okay, if you love yourself unconditionally, why would you abuse yourself? Mm. Good answer. <laughs> why, why would you do things that are going to make you feel sick? Part of loving yourself is being good to yourself. Mm -hmm. One thing that our brain has a hard time with is stagnation. Mm -hmm. And in order to, to move and grow, one of the beautiful gifts the universe gave us is curiosity. Mm -hmm. We're explorers. We're treasure hunters. We're innovators. Now, the, the evolution of society is growth. Mm -hmm. How do we do things more efficiently? You see so many uh, plants that if the sunlight is somewhere else, they will bend. Mm -hmm. They'll be flexible so they can find the sunlight again. Mm -hmm. That's not, you know, it's like, oh, I'm not good enough because I'm not in the sun. It, <laughs> it, it, it adjusts and it gets what it needs. And mm -hmm. when we grow, a lot of that is because, again, we don't live in a vacuum. We're surrounded by changing times and changes of the season. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And we need to be flexible and curious enough to ask, what must I do to adjust and continue to live in harmony mm -hmm. with the things around me? I have to grow. I have to learn new things. So you will continue to grow just by virtue of trying to maintain your equanimity in the world. Mm -hmm. I love that answer. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to wrap things up. A few more questions. I know uh, things are crazy in the world right now. And I'm wondering what wisdom you have to offer our viewers and listeners um, to stay happy and thriving in a period where there's so much chaos and and uncomfort, discomfort, discomfort. Well, when you look at all the craziness and the stuff that people are doing in the world, it's important to be very cognizant of the fact that so much of it is not about you. Mm -hmm. People are expressing their feelings and their experiences. Mm -hmm. And there's some suggestion that whites or people that are you know, not darker complected should have a degree of guilt or shame over this. And there's something to that because mm -hmm. we have really lived with our heads in the sand thinking, oh, our ancestors did that. I didn't do that. Yeah, but you live in the society they built. Mm -hmm. And there are oppressive systems that we have really been able to benefit from. Mm -hmm. So that is something we can change. I'm thinking about Gandhi's approach. His approach was about non-cooperation. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in a law, don't follow it. You know, you don't start breaking stuff or you, you don't loot. You just don't cooperate. Mm -hmm. It's very nonviolent. Mm -hmm. you, you follow what feels right for you. Mm -hmm. So when you examine any kind of racist beliefs or anything that may have been perpetuating the problem mm -hmm. unconsciously, but now mm -hmm. you're aware of it, you mm -hmm. can decide, I'm not cooperating with that anymore. People are saying racist things. I'm not going to cooperate. I'm going to challenge. I'm going to speak up. So you can think in terms of big, say, I need to go out there and pick it. I need to run for Congress. You can do stuff like that. That's awesome if it's within you. But it doesn't have to be so big that it seems unachievable and something you mm -hmm. can't take action on. So just think in terms of right now, what one thing can I decide to no longer cooperate with? And what do I replace it with? Mm -hmm. And what's my plan for doing that consistently? And then you encourage people to take that same level of personal responsibility. Maybe you create a community around it to hold yourselves accountable. And then you create a new movement and all yes. you're doing is showing up cooperating with a new truth and no longer cooperating with an old one. I love that. Brian, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom and your inspiration. This has been a blast. And um, I know that so many of my viewers have, um, I've been reading the comments, found value in this. So thank you so much. If people want to um, stay connected to you, what's a great way to find you? I know you work with group clients and one-on-one -on -one clients, um, yeah, how can they how can they continue learning from you? Well, by all means, friend me on Facebook. There, there's room. That's where I do a lot of my work and conversation. And for context, my main focus with people is to helping them unlearn their insecurity, so that all of the the inner chatter, like I described before, about how I'm not good enough, how I need to be better, how I'm not yeah. worthy helping people unlearn all that so that what's left when you peel away all those layers is the good enough that was there the whole time. Yes. Cool. Okay. So um, I will tag you in this video and they can friend you from there. Um, if you have any links, Brian, please post it also in the comments of the video so people can go to your website or I know you have a Facebook group. Um, yes. Yeah. You're awesome. And uh, I love what you're doing. Thank you so, so much for joining us. I'm so glad I found you, Melanie. It's It's been a blast knowing you in this short time. And I'm looking forward to staying connected. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Brian. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You too.